Okay, so we have our VCAM shoot. Um, let's assemble it. Yeah. Wanna check it out? Let's check it out. So that's nice. And I think we can probably do ooh, like right before, like right before he just ooh, then that's probably a cut where we do a reverse. Okay. So basically what you do is when your camera cuts track, you can click on camera and then this will show all of the cameras that are in all of the sub levels for this edit. So even if they're nested down below, you can get to them from here, which mm -hmm. is nice. So we're going to look for the reverse. We can choose this. Now we can yeah. play. Let's have it. Yeah. Let's see. And if we needed to adjust it, we can just adjust the timing. Uh huh. And it will change when the edit happens. Cool. So I think it would be good to do like somewhere right here. Then we go back to into wide. wide. But maybe this time we go to a wide that we did right behind the guy okay. that went this shooting. That one. Uh -huh. Yeah, this okay. one. So we just. Go back to here. That's nice. And I think it would be good to get some, like, let's see from the point of view of the guy okay. that is sitting on the floor. Yeah. That's cool. So we see it from the guy from the sitting on the floor. And then we might go back to the white the again white. that we were just to pick up. Sure. Yeah, that's good. So let's see how it flows from the beginning. Yeah. Let's, let's so, that going, nice. Back, that's good. From back. Okay, I think well, we can keep polishing. Mm -hmm. I think we can keep adding, but this is, this is working really well. Yeah, yeah, I like that going back to the soldier sitting down. And then we just finish it up with going back to the wide. Maybe they will, yeah. And then he's coming yeah. through it. Yeah, let's play from, let's play this whole thing, how it's working out. This one, we might adjust the focal distance mm -hmm. in a little bit. Nice. You know what this needs, the sound. It needs sound, yeah. And we also need to put some guns. Some effects, right. And effects, I think, and some lights. I think there's a good foundation that we can build on. So let's polish, let's, let's, start, let's start building. Yeah. Sounds good, man. Let's talk about mocap cleanup using control rig. So here we have our animation of the character, but the motion capture of the hands did not line up with the gun. We gave one a prop, to get them close, but it's not perfect. So this is where we can use control rig and we can clean this up and make this perfect. So if you look at a control rig for the metahuman, you'll notice there is a, a forward saw, which is where the animation typically happens. You move the controls and the bones get moved. Uh, there's a construction script that happens once that just puts all the bones into place when the character is initialized for different size metahumans. And there's this backward solve. And this backward solve runs once when you request it to go through all the positions of the bones and put those animations on the controls so that you can modify them, right? And if you were to go to a body skeletal mesh and you right click, you will see here baked to control rig. So any control rig that has a backward solve will show up in this list. Right now we only have this one right here. So we'll accept the defaults. And now what you'll see after it processes is the controls will be there. The animation will still be there, but now we can actually modify that animation. So here you see the hands, the body's moving, right? If we go to the first frame here, we can select these hands and just delete all the keyframes because we don't want these keyframes to move at all. Don't worry about his head. It'll come back. The head is a different skeleton, so it's not being affected by this here. So, okay, so now we notice the hands are stationary, but it's IK, so they're still connected and the elbows move, but uh, this allows us to place these hands wherever we want. So let's go here and do that. 
let's adjust the hands so that they are better lined up with this handle here. So we can rotate them, move them. Let's get them close, that's good. And same with this hand, we can just move it. I'm using the local space to move it around along its own axis. Makes it a little easier to line up. Okay, so now that's great. But how do we keep them with the gun if the gun moves? Because it's going to be firing bullets. So here we can select the control and we can do in the animation mode a constraint. And there are a couple of different kinds of constraints. Here we want a parent constraint. And a parent constraint will basically parent this child to this gun. We could probably do a translation constraint as well because the gun's just moving, it's not rotating. But it's usually what you want is a parent constraint because it'll basically inherit all the transforms of the gun. So we select the constraint, click on parent, and we click on the gun. And let's do this on the other side. We select the constraint, or the, the control. We choose parent constraint and click on the gun. Now, if we move the gun, you'll see the hands move with it. So we can animate this gun doing whatever we want. I mean, you know, here you can see we can lower it, raise it. Uh, we could rotate it if we wanted to, right? And so this is a great way to not worry so much about the animation because you know that you can adjust it and uh, make it better very easily in control rig afterwards. The mocap cleanup on the other soldier was a little bit different because he's holding the gun and it's moving with him, right? So we had to do a few other steps. Uh, here you can see I've already done the bake control rig, backward solve. So all of the animation is on the controls. And in the level sequence, I have added a point light for the rifle we can animate to show it shooting, the flashing. But also the rifle itself has been added in there. And uh, this can then be constrained to the body. So it was constrained to the chest so that it would move along with the body. And then those channels were baked out to keys. Here you can see the keyframes. And what we did was just adjusted where the, boat, where the uh, gun was aiming. Here are some additive curves. So I could rotate the gun to be when it's when it comes down, when it comes back. You can see there's uh, keys on there to adjust it. And because the hands are constrained to the gun, just like in the last clip, if I take this gun and I animate it, the hands follow. So I just had to get the gun following a decent trajectory then I could adjust those animations and then I could parent the hands back to the gun and then put some effects on there and they're all in one level sequence and they're spawned so I could bring this character into any level and I could spawn it and it would get the character it would get the light that spawn and it would get the gun and, and that is constrained. So that's a, a little more complicated setup because you know here the motion of the gun is a bit more a bit more involved than the uh, Gatling gun, but it's basically the same thing. And, and you know, it's uh, the other difference is that this is spawned with the character and it constrained. Another interesting thing you can do with control rig when it comes to fixing the motion capture is 
unlike the last example where we did a bake to every single control for the whole character, you can just add specific controls. I knew that when I looked at this animation, I wanted to adjust the height of the hands. The arms went up, not high enough or too far forward, or they clipped through the, the, the knees. And I knew I wanted to be able to fix that easily, but I didn't want to have to deal with all the other animation, right? Um, I also knew that I didn't have the ability to motion capture his face because he does not have a human face. And we didn't have gloves, so I was not able to motion capture the gloves. But I still wanted to put some animation on there to bring this character to life, right? So what I did is I created a control rig that is it's actually very simple. Um, there's not much there. This is the whole thing. And what it does is a couple things. The I put controls right on the arms. So you can see here on the rig hierarchy. Uh, there are uh, upper arm left controls and right controls. And what those do is they just, they are inherited just parented right into the geometry into the skeleton and then you, they rotate and they just add rotations onto the bone so they just take whatever animation is there and they can just additively increase it or decrease it right um, and that is great because if you just wanted to fix arms pushing through something you can just go in and you see here they are here uh, upper arm control i just get the control for the upper arms and I set the bone, right? It's, it's just two nodes, right? And so it's really easy to just layer that on your motion capture and make some small changes. I also took this rigging of the character and I gave it some teeth controls here. So this one control pulls all of the lips mouth in and out from one control. And I did the same thing for the fingers. So here, these are, these are the functions that just take the value and do all the bones on the chain. And same with the fingers here. I, one control can control all the fingers. Okay, so now, and same with this hand here. One control controls all the fingers. So then in the animation, in the level sequence, I can go in and if I say, hmm, in this angle here, the arm needs to just rotate out a little bit. I can just rotate it out and set a key on the rotation. And then it adjusts it, right? And if I wanted to add some facial animation, I can just adjust this control. And it's only going to affect the bones that I want to affect. And in control rig, any joints that you don't set up, the animation just goes right through. So it doesn't actually break anything here. And same thing with the hands. I can go to a spot where I, I want the hands to do something. I can uh, set a key. Set a key here. It's just one channel. I can go to the next frame, edit region. And so it's very easy to fix angles of joints that I don't like and also to add animations parts that I can't easily motion capture right so it's a um, it's all part of the process of making sure that you spend your time getting your ideas out don't worry so much about the little details of your motion because you have lots of options later for you to clean that stuff off once you realize oh yeah this is good I like this I just need to do some small adjustment so i think those are good tips to remember thanks tony for explaining how we can clean up mocap and pairing guns to the moving soldiers so now let's continue exploring this story one way we can develop the characters and add mood to this story is by using audio you can see here without audio this edit is not that fun so i went ahead and downloaded from the Unreal Engine Marketplace some gun sound effects. Let's just start adding some and hear how everything comes to life. So let's see, here we have weapons, lots of them. 
So I'm looking for a gun for that guy who's shooting a rifle. So let's look rifle and let's go back and pause. So the first time he shoots is around here and it looks like he's shooting twice that time. So I'm gonna look for a um, double, a rifle with a double sound. So double, let's see we have this, sounds kind of cool, cool. Okay, I like this one. So let's copy this, this name. Let's go back to my edit. So let's go back to what I wanted. So somewhere on here, he's about to shoot. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add an audio track. I'm gonna add the audio track. And inside this audio track, I wanna play that audio file that I picked. This one is the stereo. This is the mono. This is the stereo. So let's pick that guy. Let's hear how it sounds. Okay, that's nice. Okay, this is another good one. So next sound I'm gonna add is after we do the cut, I see the alien is reacting as he's been in shot. And I see this guy here, this soldier, kind of making this happy face or scary face of him shooting the creature, the alien. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Okay, so now somewhere on here, the first time, right before the start, like, oh yeah, when he gets hit, let's add another, another audio track. I can do it two ways. One way I can add an audio track here and it basically creates a completely new audio track and I can add it as any audio I want. Or I can also add more audios inside this audio tr track that I created. So for example, this one, I'm gonna call it audio gun sound effects, okay? And then in here, I'm gonna add another audio this, this time I'm gonna pick a machine gun. So here I see minigun and let's see minigun. Let's see, this is reload. Let's see, this is burst. This is only one. Let's do a burst. Okay, that's actually kind of cool. So let's do this one. Let's grab it. I'm gonna go back to my level sequence and here inside the audio track group that I'm calling audio gun sound effects I'm gonna add the track once again I'm gonna pick the stereo so as you can see now I have it's almost like a group of audio that I'm calling audio gun sound effects so this one let's see how that goes this other one that I created I can delete it because I don't need anything there and let's Let's play again, see how this is working. Okay, that's good. Okay, the another one that I can add is this guy. As you can see, he's leaning forward and shooting. So somewhere on here, let's see, maybe he did it before. Yeah, somewhere on here, let's add another one of, let's add like a rifle burst. Okay, so let's go again, audio track, let's pick a burst, and let's see how that goes. Okay. That's too many. Maybe what I can do is like, I, I trim it. So he goes dun dun dun, and before he, re when he's done, I'm going to slide this and I'm going to also slide this. So I'm going to start because he, he seems to be start shooting somewhere on here. So let me start sound here and let's see how that sounds. Okay, that's working. That's working much better. So I'm gonna pause the video right now and I'm gonna add a bunch of sounds and then I will be right back.
Let's listen to what I have done so far. Okay, not bad, but it really is missing the, the sound effects for the alien. So I went ahead and recorded myself acting like the alien, um, just making the sounds of the alien. And after I did that, I took it to Premiere and applied some filters just to make it sound less human, just to make it sound actually cooler. So let's add the sound effects I created. So as I, as I mentioned to you before, I, I have this whole complete audio track for my sound effects for the gun. So let's add another audio track and this time I'm going to call it Audio Alien Sound Effects. Cool. And at the beginning of the, of the edit, I'm going to add the this alien screaming this this one that i did so let's see how that goes i'm gonna actually let's see okay one thing that like one of the reasons what i like to create audio track groups is because i can quickly mute it so right now i'm just gonna sync the sound effects for the alien to the action so i'm gonna Go ahead and in the audio gun sound effects group, I'm gonna mute it so I don't get dis distracted by the, all the sound effects of the guns. And I see somewhere on here is the first time I scream. So this is what I'm gonna slide my audio track here. Let's take a look. let's play this how it goes. <laughs> Okay. That sounds like an alien screaming. Okay, that's cool. That's pretty cool. Um, let's now play with the guns, sound effects of the guns. See how everything's coming along. Okay, cool. That's enough. That's pretty cool. But I want to keep exploring. I want to keep exploring the alien, you know, because maybe the alien is not a bad alien. Maybe this is an alien that is a friendly alien and he happens to want to get out of the of that bunker door. And these guys, just because he looks scary, they start shooting. So let's add a different alien sound effects, right? So I'm gonna mute, I'm gonna mute the, the one that I recorded myself and I'm also gonna mute the guns. So let's create a new audio track and in this audio track, let's call it audio alien option two sound effects, okay? And in here, Let's go ahead and add another audio track that I, that I, that I have. And let's see how that plays. Somewhere on here, I'm going to also sync it. So the first time it plays, it plays here. Let's see if that's, let's see if this is actually going to work. Okay. Okay. So this, obviously, this is this is not as scary as the previous version. So it makes the alien be more friendly. And let's turn on the gun sound effects. And maybe when it says here, I think this is what it says. It screams. Let me mute this again. Yeah, this is good. So now let's see how it everything plays together with the 
with the sound effects. Anyway, this is just to show you, just to show you like sometimes you need to explore with sound also just to keep a mood and develop the character. Um, but yeah, never mind. That was just a test. Uh, let's turn off that again and let's carry on with the scary s sound effects, right? So now everything is playing along good. But it feels that we're missing an overall ambient sound, right? So I went ahead and I grabbed a cool combination of sound effects and I just put it together, as you can see here. And I'm just gonna, this is the ambient that I added. So we have the gun effects, the alien effects, and now the, uh, the ambient. And once we put all this together, things start feeling much better. Cool, so that's actually now sounding like a, like a good, interesting movie, right? But that's, that's as far as I'm gonna take it with sound. Another thing that I can do in order to help tell the story is with lights and, and effects. So for example, I wanna start adding, whenever, every time there is a gunshot, I will add some, some lights, some kind of muscle flashes. And then after that, we're gonna explore with the entire mood of the environment and see if with different lighting scenarios, it gives us different mood and it can help us tell the story, either give it more drama or give it more light in order so you can see better what's going on. So let's go ahead and let's start adding lights. I'm gonna start adding a light to this soldier. So, so when he shots, we're gonna animate the point light. If you guys remember, um, Tony showed us how he parented this light to the gun, right? So he did that in the level sequence. So let's go inside that level sequence. And I can see here, he basically parented the point light, right? So let's keyframe it, traditional keyframe. So somewhere around here, when he first shoots, let's go frames like this one. We're gonna, first we set a keyframe, so zero. And then one frame after, we increase the intensity to, let's say a 10. Boom, so that's on. And then two or three frames later, we turn it off again. Right. So this is how you can manually add keyframes and then match, match your sound effects. Let's actually look at this again. Match the sound effects with the light effects. So here we have the light on and then somewhere on here we have the other sound wave of the gunshot. So let's listen. Okay. So at the second one, I'm going to create it around frame 101. So let's go back again to that level sequence and keyframe. Again, here we do intensity zero and then next frame, intensity 10. And then two or three frames later, we just decrease intensity, right? Pretty straightforward. And if we play it, now, now we sync the the light effects with the sound effects, right? And that's how you will basically do every time, every time it shoots. For example, I added some other ones around here, you know, he's shooting and same technique I use for, for keyframing by hand anytime I have a sound effects, right? That's pretty straightforward. But I wanna show you a different way how you can procedurally generate the effects of a, a muscle flash. So we know Let's go look through the sequence. We know, let's take a look. We know at one point in here, 
you know, this guy first starts shooting, we did that one, and then somewhere on here, the creature is screaming, and we did, in fact, added all these sound effects for the minigun, right? So, what I want to do is like basically do the light effect of the gun, and I can do it by hand, again, setting keyframes for every single beat, but that's a lot of manual work. And if you somehow later on need to make adjustments, you're pretty much going to have to redo the work. So how we're going to approach this is by creating a material light function that allows me to procedurally generate values, random values, right? So let's, let's take a look at that. So in this case, um, I'm going to create, I already created, but I'm just going to go over how we did it. So I'm going to create a, a material that is called machine gun, gun effects, All right? So this is a material, and the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna turn it into a um, material domain to a light function. This is basically the kind of material that you need in order to put in a light. So what we wanna do is like get values like bright enough, on and off, on and off, right? In order to do that, we can actually use noise a noise will create basically a, a values and we, you know, like random values like we can see here. So we're going to create this, control the speed, you know, and the way how we control the speed is by time. So I have time and I probably want to, time is a constant value. This is time of the, of the keyframes. So I want to control speed up or slow down. So let's do a multiply. And we're going to multiply time by a constant number, a parameter. So I'm going to make convert this to a parameter. And I'm going to do a, a speed mult. Uh, by default, it's going to be, let's put one. And who knows, we change this, these values later on. Let's do 100. So this is going to be multiplying the speed and that's going to be our position right so as you can see it's doing on and off on and off and if i increase this value to 10 that on and off is going to be more faster and then we're going to create another another parameter another parameter that this is going to be filter width filter width that is going to basically help us to con to control the amplitude of the noise Right? So this is like the minimal, the minimal uh, setup that you have to do here. I'm going to go back to the content browser, right click in the material, create a material instance. I'm going to call this MI machine gun effects. Right? Now let's create a point light and let's parent the point light to the machine gun. I'm gonna name this point light, point light MG machine gun. And I know this guy is called something MNG. So as you can see, so I'm gonna parent this guy under. Then I'm gonna zero the transformations. So, it be, so it's close to where the machine gun is. And the reason why I'm parenting the, the point light is in case we need to move the animation or the gun moves, or we need to reposition this, it just moves with it, and we don't have to do this every time. So the placement, let's put it somewhere around here. This is kind of like a good placement for, for the light. And here, as you can see, this light is constant, has a constant value. So let's add into the light function material, let's add the material instance that we created. The material instance machine gun effects. So as you can see now, we see the flickering on and off, on and off really fast. That's why we create a material instance that helps us edit those parameters and get a visual representation here real time. So the speed, as you can see, if I go to one, it's really slow, obviously 0.2 is even slower, but let's do something like 10 or maybe 100. That's good, it's kind of good good flickering and the filter width allow it just to adjust also kind of like the 
the amplitude. So this is this is kind of like kind of like a nice ta -ta 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 -ta. okay. That is good for now. So let's save this. And now let's move on into adjusting this the speed of the slides. Right now it's constant, always on, on and on. Also the color, the color is white at this moment. So let's actually apply a color to these lights, something like, like a, more like fire, that's good. So now we have non-stop firing gun. And what we wanna do now is we're gonna animate the intensity because I've set this to zero, it's completely off, right? And we have some cool sound effects around here for the machine gun. Let's take a look through the camera just to really see when we need to animate this. So as you can see, we this is where we cut into the creature shooting, into a creature being shot. So somewhere around here, and also let's look at where we keyframe the animation. Somewhere around here, that's when we start shooting or hearing this, the, the, the sounds. So let's go one frame forward. And here is where I'm gonna keyframe the gun, set up keyframe zero. Once I set the keyframe, it automatically adds this point light into my level sequence and here's zero and then one frame forward we turn it on let's do this this is 20 boom so now it's on and then if we keep playing that's the sound ends somewhere around there so let's go back and look at the sound wave and somewhere around here is the last shot so let's set another keyframe do 20 and then two or three frames after one two three with keyframe to zero right so as we see here i just added those keyframe and let's play and see how it works cool so you saw i mean it, it might be the yellow i might it might need to adjust the color it's a little too 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 desaturated so i'm just gonna Saturate this a little bit more and that's kind of working well. Cool. So I just show you how to add light effects. And now I want to show you how changing the look of the environment also affects the look and feel of the story. So let's keep exploring this, the story development by lighting. We have a um, a really nice plugin is called Level Snapshot. This plugin is part of the virtual production template. So the way it works is that you click this button, take a snapshot, and what it's gonna do is gonna record the state of your scene right now. So I'm gonna say here, I'm gonna call this snapshot default lighting, right? So I create this stuff. So that way it remembers this lighting in case I wanna go back. I at the moment, I don't have enough time for me to go and explain you what changes, what things to change in order to get different looks. But I did previously create a multiple states for different lightings. So I'm gonna open my level snapshot editor. And here we see I created multiple ones. The one I just created is the default lighting. But I wanna show you this one, the moonlight. I wanted to, to explore how this story will feel if it's being told at night. So I'm gonna double click on it, and right now it's comparing this snapshot with the current state of the scene. And here we see that there's three actors that have been modified, the gun, the ultra sky dynamic, which is the, my lighting rig, and the post process. So I only wanna restore the changes in these two. I click restore. And once it finished restoring, now, this is the night time. So let's take a look how will this story will look like for, if it's been told at night. And I also gonna remove my exposure compensation. I'm gonna leave the game settings and let's play it. Okay, because as we can see, it's interesting, it's darker, therefore we lose, uh, we don't get to see a lot of what's happening. 
So maybe let's go and explore another look that I save, which I actually really like. This next look is, I call it overcast drama. If we double click on the level snapshot, it shows me what actors are different in the current state versus this one. As you can see, I have a lot of post-process volume I added. I added dirt on the, on the lens, I added vignette, I added saturation, film grain, and a bunch of things. So let's restore this and let's take a look how it looks. Cool, this is definitely more moody. You know, it has the film grain, so it makes it feel like an old movie. So let's play it. So yeah, I definitely like this look much better. So I think it's now time to render this clip. And Tony's gonna explain us how to use Movie Render Cube. So you've captured your characters, you've cleaned things up, you've got your VCAMs done, you've assembled some edits, and now you want to export this creation so that you can share it with the world. So the movie render queue is the next step for that. So you're going to want to make sure that you look in the plugins and movie render queue is enabled because it may not be. If you used a template like we talked about, it would be, but if you just started a, a scene from scratch, you might not have it. So if you were to go into this little icon here, in the dots, you can choose the render movie. So if you didn't activate it, you're going to see movie scene capture legacy, but you, you don't really want to use that. You want to use movie render queue. You'll have a lot more options. Okay. So let's, let's uh, click on this. And what it will show here is you will see the sequence. Now, whatever happens to be loaded here, it will fill out here. So the sequence that you're running in this case, it's uh, LS UE fest here, level sequence. And then it's the map name here, right? Um, so you put these in, and this is important because when it runs the movie render queue, it's going to load this map again, and it's going to load this level sequence. So if you don't have things saved in here, um, you're not going to get what you expect. Right? So, so however you loaded the scene uh, is how it's going to look. And sometimes you might have characters turn on or off because you hid them. So it's important to know you're not just rendering this scene. You are reloading the stuff okay so we can click the settings to get all the information for how this movie or image sequences is going to be exported so by default it's going to be a jpeg image sequence right one two three four five six seven eight you know, right the individual files um, the deferred render is the default and then it's going to give you pretty standard uh, output directory which is under the saved file in the project directory and her movie renders so uh, i this is kind of hidden i don't like this i prefer to choose a place to put my renders so here e renders i can choose another folder just so you know where it goes um, and then by default like i said it's going to do a jpeg sequence so you could do other types of sequences but another option is that you can choose a command line encoder now what the command line encoder is if you go to your project settings and you look at the command line encoder if you download from the internet this ffmpeg.exe and you tell it the directory this will allow you to create movies mp4 movies and it will automatically attach the audio if you have it into the movie so this saves the step of having to generate a bunch of images hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of images and then use something like Premiere or Moving Coder to import all those and then take the audio and line it up. This will, if you choose, if you set this up here and you have a video codec, which is LIBX264, you type in audio codec of the AAC and output files MP4. If you put this information here and you just choose command line encoder, it's gonna render out the sequence. It's going to also take the wave audio here you can add that too and it's going to combine them together so you will get one movie file an mp4 that has all your video 
and all your audio combined into one. So this is how it's very convenient to work. You can quickly look at versions. You can take that MP4 and then drop that into an edit if you want to. So this is very much a, a way that I recommend. And then once you have your settings, you can save them if you want to, preset, and accept. And when you do that, you can then render local. You could do remote if you had a farm set up, but render local is the common way. And it's going to load that scene up in the background. And it's going to go through, given all your settings, and it's going to step through each frame of the video, every cut. It's going to save those JPEG files out. And if you look at the hard drive, you'll see that the files are being written as it goes. It doesn't matter if you cover this. So these are being generated. And when all those files are done, it's going to run a command line script that uses FFmpeg and the audio file and merges them all into one. So we just have to wait. Uh, sometimes, depending on your settings, this process can take longer. This uh, is mostly real time, but if you wanted to get it to look really nice, you can really increase the motion blur quality settings. And this is where you can get something that is closer to a standard rendering approach. Okay, so then this is all exported. You will wait because it's going to do some processing. It's running the batch process in the background. And then you, it's done. You can go and find your video and see it somewhere down here. It's called lsuefs.wave or .mp4 right there. Then you can run it and check it out. So Tony, any closing thoughts? Yeah. So you want to render early and often. You want to make sure that you don't have any problems and you have no surprises. Yeah. And then you want to fail fast. You want to see your ideas and if they don't work, just move on to new ideas, right? And, and get them in front of you as soon as possible. Good point. And then you don't want to worry about the small details. Like you can make this much prettier later. This visualization process is just about getting the, the points across quickly, right? Mm -hmm. And then you want to think about where you want to do editorial. If you have an offline render that you're going to do in Premiere or something afterwards, you just need to make your sequences and render them out. If you want to do your editing and editorial in Unreal and see these shots, then you should spend more time learning how to do the camera cuts. Right? And then during performance capture, make sure your frame rate is as high as possible. You don't want to be dropping frames when you're recording this stuff. And then understand what's important in each shot. There's going to be areas where you're not going to be able to see what's happening. So if a foot is clipping or something, don't worry about that because the camera won't see it. And then I just want to give a special thanks to Road2 Entertainment for letting us use this environment. It's, it's amazing. And then Aaron Sims Creative has put this creature you see on the marketplace for free. So make sure you check that out. Cool. That's it. Now we're going to end it with Q&A. So we're going to open live so you guys can ask any questions you have. Thank you. Thanks.